Hey, it's Chris, and in this video, we're going to talk about Red Bull. As you probably know, Red Bull sponsor a ton of athletes. They sponsor a Formula One team, they sponsor football teams, and they sponsor some high-level triathletes, including Lucy Charles Barkley and Brandon Curry. If you've ever seen Lucy Charles's Instagram, Lucy Charles Barkley's Instagram, it's filled with pictures of her in like a Red Bull hat, drinking a Red Bull. Red Bull want to make us all think that they're really into athletics and the athletes drink Red Bull. But whenever I see a Facebook ad for Red Bull, it's filled with comments saying, well, pro athletes would never touch this stuff. But is that true? Like, do pro athletes actually drink Red Bull? And should they? It's probably another good question. So in this video, we're going to explore that. If you want the quick answer, the answer is I think that the pro athletes do use them. I don't think they're lying when they talk about their use of it. And in terms of whether they should, well, mostly yes. And we'll, we'll really get into the detail of that in this video. So, I mean, let's start with what Red Bull is, right? Like, the, the nice thing about consumer protection laws is these days is that you have to put the ingredients on the product. So whenever you're wondering what something is made of, well, they legally have to write all the ingredients on the can or the packet or the gel wrapper or whatever it is you're taking. It's quite hard to keep industrial secrets because you have to tell the consumer what's in there. So if we find the ingredients list here, here it is. So it's just... Here, you won't be able to read it. I might stick it on the screen. But in terms of what's in it, well, it's got full of water, uh, sucrose, glucose, uh, citric acid, carbon dioxide, tor taurine, and then a bunch of other ingredients as well. You can go through the list in yourself. So let's look at that and break it down. Water is good, right? Like when we're having a drink. Uh, we want to get as much water as we can to stay hydrated. Obviously, very apparent in the drink. Uh, I also think it's often underestimated, like you eat a vegetable and a vegetable is mostly water, so that's a good source of water as well. Obviously, nothing wrong with water in a drink. Um, then it's got uh, sucrose, which is sugar. So you won't be surprised to hear that a, a sugary energy drink we'll talk about the meaning of energy drink later, is filled with sugar. Um, so if we compare that to, say, an energy gel, in fact, let's grab one of those. Got some here. So a lot of energy gels these days are going for a two to one ratio of glucose and fructose, which is the fastest way to deliver energy because the body really doesn't need to digest sucrose and, sorry, glucose and fructose. Those are the component parts. Sucrose, which is table sugar, which you find in your fizzy drinks, that does need a little bit of digesting because sucrose is one glucose and one fructose molecule. Let's make sure I get that right. And so the body needs to cleave those in two and take up the glucose molecule and the fructose molecule separately. So a tiny bit of digestion when there is sugar, um, but nothing too much to worry about. And then the Red Bull also has glucose in, which again is what you would find in your gel. So that sounds pretty good, right? Because if you think you want a two to one ratio of glucose to fructose to get the maximum uptake of energy, well, if you've got sugar, which is half glucose, half fructose, and then you've got added glucose, that sounds roughly about that two to one ratio. It doesn't say exactly that it's two to one ratio, but it sounds like a good ratio for being able to take energy up. Um, then it's got caffeine in. Caffeine is a stimulant. So again, that's one of the, it's one of the ways that you can uh, use a performance enhancing substance without breaking anti-doping laws. So caffeine and a couple of other substances are allowed, even though we know they enhance endurance performance. So nothing wrong with caffeine. Okay, so we've talked about the main ingredients of Red Bull and there's nothing super weird or damaging in there, right? Like there's there's energy, which is, is the sugar that we need to perform our exercises, water to keep us hydrated, 
and there's caffeine to improve performance. So in terms of our caffeine uptake levels, uh, the best levels are around three to six milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So if you weigh 70 kilograms, you could take 350 milligrams of caffeine and that would be fine, that, that, that would be a great ratio. And Red Bull contains 30 milligrams per 100 milligrams. So that means in a can this size, which is a 250, you're going to get around 75 milligrams of caffeine, which means you could do four, four and a half of these cans to get to the optimal range of caffeine. So there's, um, if you're going to drink like 10 or 20 of them, maybe that's too much uh, but in terms of if you do four or five in a race you're probably going to hit that optimal range of caffeine okay so what about the chemicals in there i want to address this idea of the the naturalistic fallacy so the idea that everything naturally is good and chemicals are bad but of course everything in the universe is made of chemicals every plant every human every rock is just chemicals arranged in a certain way um, but there's really not that much weird stuff in here anyway like there's a few additives to regulate it but it, it's mostly sugar water and stuff like caffeine and all of that is really good for doing sport so what we've really got here is a fruity energy drink with caffeine and let's clear up this idea of uh, this energy drink because people tend to associate in kind of common parlance we talk about energy drinks as things with caffeine in so like relentless and monster and red bull to an extent are supposedly loaded with caffeine and often taurine and those are called energy drinks because they kind of perk us up in the same way that coffee does but it's worth noting that like you can get sugar-free red bull that's still called an energy drink but caffeine doesn't provide any energy what provides energy is carbohydrate it's sugar which is a carbohydrate um so really if you look at something like lucasade sport got a load of that here let me grab something so this is called lucasade sport is a sport drink and it doesn't have any caffeine in but it's packed full of energy because it's got sugar in it's got glucose in so the common meaning of kind of energy drink is associated with caffeine but when we're talking about sport and wanting to get energy into our body to uh, do a, a long race do a triathlon it's really sugar it's really carbs that we need and so when you're trying to get energy in you want a sports drink rather than an energy drink because something like a sugar-free caffeine drink isn't going to give you any energy Caffeine will still be good for endurance performance, but it won't provide you with any energy. Stick that back down there. Okay, so there's this idea that energy drinks are bad. And it's true that they do kind of have a negative public image. Uh, so why is that? Well, number one is maybe that caffeine is addictive. So in the same way that people get somewhat dependent on coffee, and if they don't, have their coffee they end up getting grumpy well you can find the same thing with caffeine if you let yourself have that caffeine pick up for breakfast every morning not necessarily the best way but uh you know a billion people around the world use caffeine recreationally if you're gonna do a drug better to do caffeine than, than most other drugs especially the the controlled substances caffeine's a very safe one to do the other reason that these things get a bad reputation is that they're what's called empty calories. I'm not going to dispute that idea. So an empty calorie is something that provides energy without providing a lot of micronutrients. So things like vitamins and minerals. So you end up filling up on something like a chocolate bar or crisps. And it's not really giving you all those vitamins and minerals you need. And yet somehow... It, but it's still providing the calories and so you're not having that balanced diet you're not getting that healthy diet now i'm not going to dispute that something like a, a red bull or, or a lucasade sport or an energy gel 
Uh, these things are empty calories, like they're, they're just carbohydrate. There's no protein in them. There's no fats. We need some fats. There's none of those micronutrients and vitamins and minerals we need. So it literally is what we would describe as empty calories in here. But that's a good thing for sport because when you're doing a triathlon, you don't want to be spending time processing and breaking down proteins, which take a lot of energy in your digestive system. You literally want to get as much carbohydrate into your body as possible so that you have energy to do the exercise. Then in the rest of your life, that's when you go and eat your healthy, balanced diet and try and get all of that good stuff into your body. But when you're training or you're racing, you want carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, to give you energy as fast as possible so that you can perform well. Now, the reason I think energy drinks get a bad drink is that people sit around all day on the sofa or in an office chair drinking energy drinks, putting empty calories into their body for no reason and then not getting that balanced diet. But as triathletes, as athletes, if we're using things like energy drinks when we're training and racing and then we're eating a balanced diet the rest of the time, then that's ideal. That's literally what we want to be doing. That's good nutrition. So let's go back to the original question then. Do athletes use Red Bull? Well, I think they do because athletes need carbohydrates. They need sugar and this is full of it. And they also want caffeine to perform better on race days because caffeine improves endurance. And again, this is full of caffeine. So it's actually a good product. Now, does it mean that it's better than other products like uh, other energy and sports drinks available out there? I don't necessarily think so, but if Red Bull was paying me to drink it, then it's as good as any other product and I, I would drink their product um, if they were paying me to do it because there's nothing wrong with it. As we've talked about, it is a good product for athletes. And of course, athletes make a lot of their money through sponsorship, especially in triathlon. The prize purses are not big compared to something like football. So a lot of athletes have to make money from sponsorship. And if you can take sponsorship from a company like Red Bull and that allows you to do triathlon professionally, then it makes sense to do that. Also, from my own personal experience of doing things like Ironman, like you really want that caffeine and sugar pick me up especially when you're in the marathon uh, at a full distance triathlon and you're just exhausted and you just need energy and caffeine to keep you going then i think red bull is a great option and i always look i always try and get halfway through the marathon before i start caffeinating myself so i don't drop off at a later point and i really look forward to that point when i can start drinking some red bull or some coke or whatever they've got on course so do athletes actually drink Red Bull? Well, the answer is almost certainly yes, because energy drinks are not inherently bad. In fact, for training and racing, they provide a lot of the things that athletes need. Um, sugar and caffeine are good. They're just not good when they're abused, when they're used outside of a setting of sat on a sofa on an evening, not really doing anything, where you don't need those simple carbohydrates and that caffeine, you just need good food. If you, spend, if you lead a sedentary life and drink a lot of Red Bull, it's not going to end particularly well for you in terms of eating that balanced diet. But in terms of should athletes use it, then absolutely yes. And so I'm pretty sure they do because it's a good product. And um, just because they're sponsored by Red Bull doesn't make it a bad product. Hopefully that was interesting. If so, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in triathlon and all the nutrition and science and stuff around that, then hit the subscribe button because that's what my channel is all about. And I would love to see you in another video.